in this video, I will identify the exact location of the ancient cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because the Bible has given us enough clues to pinpoint the area of Israel that was once known as Sodom and Gomorrah. The Song of Moses, recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, and the Song of Songs, written by the wise King Solomon, contain the two secrets that God has given to us so we can positively identify the original location of Sodom and Gomorrah. I am aware that there have been numerous efforts to identify the location of Sodom and Gomorrah, with some people concluding that the two cities are buried under the Dead Sea. In recent years, scientists and archaeologists have come up with theories stating that Sodom and Gomorrah were located in an area of the Jordan Valley known as Tel El Hammam. Unfortunately for these people, not even once does the Bible mention a place called Tel El Hammam. And we know that God's word always interprets itself. So we do not have to resort to science, archaeology, guesswork, or human imagination to explain biblical mysteries. So then, where exactly was Sodom and Gomorrah located? To help us identify the location of the two great cities which God Almighty destroyed in fierce anger because of their wickedness, I will begin with a quotation from the first song, which is the Song of Moses. This is a song which God commanded the Israelites never to forget. God also instructed Moses to record the song because the words of the song would in future be a witness for God against his people. Since God knew that the Israelites would certainly corrupt their ways and worship false gods. Deuteronomy 32 Verses 30 to 32, I read, How could one man chase a thousand, or two put ten thousand to flight, unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? For their rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies concede. Their vine comes from the vine of Sodom, and from the fields of Gomorrah. The above passage helps us to understand that there are two types of people in the world. Those who belong to the true God of heaven and those who belong to the devil, who is the God of this world. There are also two spiritual rocks and two spiritual vines with people belonging to one of the two sides. The Song of Moses reveals that there is our rock and then there is their rock, just as there is our vine and their vine. The rock of all false believers, which is their rock, is of course Satan the devil, while the rock of true believers, which is our rock is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The Apostle Paul commands us to always be aware that the Lord Jesus Christ is the rock of Israel and of all those who believe in the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 4, I read, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and 
that rock was Christ. In the same way that there are two spiritual rocks, there are also two spiritual vines. The true vine and the corrupt vine. The first vine is the Lord Jesus Christ, who called himself the true vine, the one who came down from heaven and still lives in heaven. John 3, verse 13, I read, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. John 15, verse 1, I read, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. While the Lord Jesus Christ is the true vine which is in heaven, Satan the devil is the corrupt wild vine, the one who lives and roams around the earth looking for someone to deceive and to corrupt. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 I read, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Jeremiah 2, verse 21, I read, I had planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt wild vine? The devil, who is the corrupt wild vine, was once perfect in beauty and filled with wisdom. Unfortunately, Satan the devil corrupted his wisdom because of pride, as the prophet Ezekiel explains to us. Ezekiel 28, verse 17, I read, Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. The Bible tells us that Satan the devil, who is the wild and corrupt vine, is also known as the vine of the earth because he spends most of his time roaming on the earth. Since he was thrown down to the earth after corrupting his wisdom and sinning against God, the fact that there is an earthly vine known as Satan the devil, is the key that helps us identify the exact location of Sodom and Gomorrah, as I will soon reveal. But first, we return to the Song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32, verses 31 to 32, I read. For their rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies concede. Their vine comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are filled with poison and their clusters with bitterness. The above passage tells us that Satan the devil, who is also the wild and corrupt vine, is the rock of all non-believers and also the vine which comes from the vineyards of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. The passage also tells us that those people who follow the devil are regarded as clusters of grapes which are filled with poison and bitterness. The book of Revelation describes two great harvests of souls that will take place at the end of time. The first to be harvested or resurrected from the earth are God's holy people who are also regarded as grapes belonging to the true vine who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is how God's people are harvested or resurrected from the earth. Revelation 14 verses 15 to 16 I read. Then Another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, 
because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Following the harvesting of the earth, which is the resurrection of God's holy people, the Lord will punish the wicked for their rejection of Christ. The punishment of the wicked is described as the harvesting of the clusters of grapes that come from the vine of the earth, because these people belong to Satan the devil, who is also regarded as a vine that comes from the fields and vineyards of the earth. Revelation 14 verses 18 to 20 I read, Still another angel, who had charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horses' bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. As I indicated earlier, the Song of Songs, also known as the Song of Solomon, contains the second key required to identify the location of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sadly, the Song of Solomon is a book that has been completely misunderstood by both Christians and non-Christians alike. The song has been regarded as a love poem instead of the prophetic end-time book that it is. Solomon's mysterious song describes the devil and the ultimate antichrist as a cluster of henna blossoms obtained from the vineyards of a place known as Engedi. Song of Songs 1 verse 14 I read, My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms from the vineyards of Engedi. I must state clearly that the person being addressed as my beloved is not the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus did not come from the vineyards of this world, but from heaven. On the contrary, the verse is describing the Antichrist, who is the false vine or false messiah, whom God regards as a cluster of henna blossoms obtained from the earthly vineyards of Engedi, a place that is located in the wilderness of Judah, near the Dead Sea. But why would God use such mysterious language? The answer is because God always speaks to people in parables, so as to hide the deep secrets of his kingdom. What God is communicating to us is that the place we know today as the wilderness of Engedi, the one located in the land of Canaan, is the same place where we find the ancient cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is why their vine, meaning the false vine or false messiah, who is of course the coming antichrist or Satan in human flesh, is said to come from the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. At the same time, the antichrist, who is the vine of the earth, is also said to come from the vineyard of Engedi, implying that the vineyard of Engedi are the same as the fields of Sodom and Gomorrah. I will place the two scriptures next to each other so you can see clearly what I am talking about. 
Deuteronomy 32, verses 31 to 32, I read, For their rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies concede. Their vine comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are filled with poison and their clusters with bitterness. Song of Solomon 1 verse 14, I read, My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms from the vineyard of Engedi. So, to those who have been looking for the location of Sodom and Gomorrah, please look no further. Just visit the wilderness of Engedi, and when you stand in that area, be reminded that you are standing right where God rained down burning sulfur to destroy the ancient cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, turning them into the wilderness that we know today as the wilderness of Engedi. The next passage confirms that Sodom and Gomorrah were transformed into a wilderness after God's judgment fell upon the wickedness of these two cities. Zephaniah 2 verse 9 I read, Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, surely Moab will become like Sodom, the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a place of weeds and salt pits, a wasteland forever. Indeed, Sodom and Gomorrah were transformed into a barren wilderness located in the land of Judah, the same wilderness into which David hid as he fled from King Saul, who was trying to kill him. First Samuel 24, verse 1, I read, Now it happened, when Saul had returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Take not, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. The location of Sodom and Gomorrah is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit through a study of the very unromantic Song of Songs, a book that has absolutely nothing to do with love or romance. Such are the mysteries of God's holy word. <laughs>